Hello, everyone. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a little application that came out a little while ago called the Flight Log Analyzer. Uh, for those of you who haven't had a chance to check this one out, it's uh, flightlogAnalyzer.com. Uh, no joke. Uh, they didn't give this one to me. You can actually see that this is the demo version of it and everything like that. But it's a neat little tool, and there's a couple of little things that we have in it. And I wanted to take a couple of minutes to actually go through some of my data to show it to you. Now, one thing I do have to throw out here, which I actually find very interesting, is when I was playing a flight sim, on my entire initial log, uh, two and a half years of flying, got destroyed. You know, that was <laughs> a very sad day when I moved my flight simulator folder and it wouldn't resynchronize. So I've lost so, so much. But there's actually a lot of really interesting things that uh, we can extract from this, which I find actually pretty cool. Uh, we have the ability to kind of tweak the length of the flight. We have the ability to take a look at the runways, the flight times themselves, uh, the distance, all those components are in here. And what I find really interesting, at least with this application, is you actually have the ability to fix these things that say I never took off. <laughs> um, how do I not take off and not land? Like, how do I just start in the air and not end in the air kind of a thing like that? But uh, the cool thing is there, the advanced version of this will let you actually fix all those zeros that you have listed here. So so let's kind of play around a little bit and I'll see what I do. So the first thing I'm curious, of course, is um, what is the most common plane that I fly? So I'm going to come up to here and hit group analysis and summary. Now, the reason I love this is this is actually going to take a look at all my stuff and give you some interesting information here. Um, when it comes to flights, uh, let's see here. Our winner is the Cessna Skyhawk with 103 flights. 29 hours of flying time, a um, little bit of night flying time. I remember making that video. The original video was four hours, but um, I see that that got eaten. That's okay. Wow. <laughs> so um, this is going to crack you up a little bit. But I have uh, quite a bit of time in the 172 in the real world. You know, what's so fascinating here is I actually have significantly more flight time than this indicates, and I have significantly more landings than this indicates. What I find very interesting, though, is how I have more takeoffs than landings. Obviously, it means I didn't finish it. You also notice my average flight is about 18 minutes, which um, for those of you who know my videos are like, oh, I see what he did there. And you can see my average distance is about 46. That's kind of interesting. I, I didn't quite expect that. So let's see what airplane we've uh, done the most takeoffs in. And uh, that goes to the Cessna. Let's see what we go to the most landings. It goes to the Cessna. That completely checks out in every shape and form kind of a thing. I get that. Our number two, of course, is uh, the 182, uh, which makes sense. I get that. I get that. Uh, that's I do fly that a lot for practice for the real 182. Uh, the G36, naturally. The 152, naturally. And uh, you can see kind of the airplanes that fly in the real world sort of uh, make up the top here. I really wish I had my old logbook. This is, this is cool, but not not great. Other things, of course, we can explore here is what plane have I flown at night the most? Boop! And we can see the 787, because of course the 787 is um, it's a long range airliner. You know, one of the things I love about long range airliners is your flights don't have to be like all in the day kind of a thing like that. Uh, the Cirrus, of course, lots of time. The 787, lots of time. The 320, you can kind of see all my airliners sort of make up the bulk of my nighttime flying kind of a thing, which is actually kind of funny when you look at it that way. Uh, of course, we can do a uh, daytime flight. Oh, look at that. Some of those didn't even count. That's kind of bothersome. And let's see here. Oh, we already have that one. Let's take a look at distance now. I'm kind of curious. Uh, distance? <laughs> That's a pretty fun number right there. I love how the Dark Star is like 3,700 miles, but it's like I only have five flights in it. And the reason it's so insane is because of the fact that... Oh, look at that. It didn't even count any of the landings I made with that plane. What the heck? Uh, the cool thing here, of course, is um, that, like the distance, the speed on that thing is so high, but you can see my 8.7 and all those kind of things are pretty fast. You can also see my Delta from PMDG. I put plenty of time into this plane. Now, people who are very perceptive and uh, very, very observant here will notice the fact that I indeed use time acceleration. Now, if you again, I think there's nothing wrong with time acceleration. And you can look at things like, oh, the 787. Oh, you traveled uh, 3,000 miles. So 3,000 miles. I uh, will do the math here. I uh, divided by six hours. We've got 500 miles per hour, which actually is not terrible. That's actually a fairly realistic number. That one's not offensive. Uh, there's going to be other ones that are far more offensive as far as that goes. So this is pretty cool. And I can actually right click in here and I can actually open open up uh, flight maps and things like that and kind of see the details of the different flights here. Kind of cool. I'm just like, oh man, I wish it did not eat my first thing. Kind of neat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of these randomly. I love all the red ones that I have to go back and fix. And you can get a feel for, um, yeah, I fly a lot in Connecticut. Uh, that doesn't surprise me at all. Well, let's go up to OMSC here. I'll go ahead and I'll double click that one. I'll right click. We can do a flight map. We can do built-in viewer. And the cool thing about this application is it'll actually show you what's going on. You know, you can see we're up in OMSC here and we flew up at kind of that sort of a piece. I like how it's got basic route mode. Like this shows you where we're supposed to have gone. I can even put like a satellite overlay if I want to kind of see those details. That's pretty fun to play with, but I'm not nearly as fun as some of the other things. Let's try to find one where I have a lot of landings. Uh, usually that's indicating that I'm probably practicing with the 182 or something like that. Gotta grab this sucker and make it just a little bit longer. There we go. Nice. Let's go the other way. 
All right, all the way to the top. Ah, uh, there we go, eight landings. Aha, I can tell you what I was doing that day. Uh, let's go ahead and right click on this one, flight map. And uh, we'll go ahead and actually open it up with uh, Google Earth. Uh, it seems a little weird, but believe it or not, this application uh, supports uh, Google Earth and I can actually see, don't show it and go away. And here's my flight. <laughs> Somebody was practicing for a check ride. This looks familiar. So um, I can tell here that um, obviously uh, the little flight path analyzer here, uh, something uh, not quite right here. You know, when I look at this, um, I notice that my traffic pattern is a little limited. Um, that, that's not what my traffic pattern would look like. It would look much more like a traffic pattern. I have actual data I pull off of GPS. It's, it's much more round than that. But it's kind of amusing to see that clearly I was uh, doing some practice here. And I also love that my flight, oh, of course, where did I go to fly to practice? I always go over to Wyndham. And here's Wyndham. And now uh, you can see how I'm coming from different angles and I'm coming at different times and different pieces and doing all my landings and stuff. And it's just uh, one of those like kind of neat little pieces there that you know you can see exactly sort of what I would have done in the past. I'll go ahead and uh, discord that real quick. Discord, oh, we can discord that too. For everybody, go ahead now. Let's take a look at the built-in viewer real quick here. And again, it looks fairly much the same here. And there's only so much data that this collects from your actual flight when it saves it into your logbook. By the way, your logbook has a limited size. And you, know, you can take a look over here that I am uh, doing pretty well here. I'm about 38% full on it. Kind of interesting. Uh, let's see. I'm kind of curious about these other landings, though. And uh, let's see. Wyndham Airport to this one, runway 27. I bet you I can predict what this flight's going to look like. Watch this. Ah! <laughs> Same concept, right? So this is clearly an exercise in uh, running over to Wyndham and practicing. Uh, usually I would have done this if uh, like I knew that I would have to do some practice. You have no idea how much time I've spent at this real runway in the real world, basically destroying the ground. But you can see all the different types of landings and different angles and crosswind landings. And then, of course, I'd come uh, rushing back here and I lined up for Hartford. I really appreciate the fact that it didn't catch uh, the kind of the last part of the uh, landing there, which is just sort of interesting to me. But like I said, it's just such a fascinating piece that uh, they have this tool sort of built in here. Of course, if I want to swing over to uh, you can organize it by where you're going i love all these places that i didn't go anywhere which is kind of interesting uh, like i open up uh, this one right here that's 715 miles so uh, what's the deal with that so of course i can open up this one and i can tell you exactly what i was doing in this flight i was going to the south pole <laughs> so if you want to see something kind of amusing here let me zoom out you can see taking off from pegasus straight line to the south pole and you can see my aircraft glitching terribly once I got to the South Pole here. And it's actually kind of funny. For anybody who hasn't tried that flight, by the way, it's, it's kind of an interesting exercise and sort of absurdity. So there are a couple other things that we have uh, built in here, which I think is uh, pretty darn cool as far as this goes, is uh, you can organize it by date, you can organize it by time, where you're coming from, you can even pick different airplanes and things like that. And I'm just so fascinated by it. Now, one of the features I mentioned that uh, we don't have in this particular version because they didn't register it yet. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I don't know. I have yeah, uh, kind of a 50-50 thing. I just enjoy going through this myself. Uh, one of the things that's really cool is you can fix these guys. And unfortunately, like I said, we can't do this here. And we can even delete flights directly out of it. But one of the cool buttons, there's actually an export flight button. You know, one of the things they'll give you in the export flight button is the ability to actually export your data, both from basic flight info as well as a basic flight route. Now you're sitting here saying, why would you, why does this even matter? Because you can export it as a CSV file, which people are sitting there going, uh, CSV file, why would you want to do that? Well, let's uh, create a CSV file and I will show you why I'd want to do that. When I double click on it like this naturally, uh, what you're going to see here is you're going to see all of the different details on the top and you're going to see my actual latitude and longitude positions kind of uh, sprayed across the bottom here. Now you're sitting here going, well, this is pretty pointless because uh, I can't really see what's going on here, which is why the KML export is actually very useful as well. But uh, for those of you who do a lot of work as far as analysis goes, you could come in here and actually export all of this. And of course, if you export all of this, it gives you the ability to go ahead and I'll go ahead and grab that kind of thing. Richard, oh, I can't export all of it because I don't have the standard license. But you could actually export this entire documents so we could actually create ourselves uh, do a bunch of data analysis we could do clustering of flights and stuff like that and i have a bias for runways that start with the number two <laughs> but as you can see it's uh, quite a lot of interesting information here so this is a pretty neat application. Um, like I said, 50-50 on whether I want to pick up a standard license. I sort of want to come and fix all these because look at how many flights Microsoft broke as far as um, not recognizing takeoff or landings. And it's not because I start in the air because I don't start in the air. It's just one of those things where it doesn't synchronize properly sometimes. So I'm missing out. Uh, one thing I really love though is if you look at my total numbers here, I have 818 takeoffs with the exception of my probably 200 that are broken. 810 uh, daytime takeoffs. I have uh, eight night landings. 
<laughs> I have more night landings in the real world than I do in this logbook. That's so funny. And of course, 830, and then you can see actually quite a bit there as well. And it's just really fascinating. One thing I really wish, though, is that they had the ability to kind of uh, study uh, different kinds of things with, um, what's the best way to describe it? Having the ability to see IFR, uh, we don't have that here. We just have this, and also rain would be kind of fun. And I was like the fact you can come over here and you can see all the different, you know, weather types and stuff that I use. You know, it's like the best weather. And it's just, like I said, very, very fascinating. I also like how Sobo Free Flights, if you look really carefully... I've only had, what, one mission in there? Two missions, three missions in there. It's probably the 18, yeah, the F-18. I think that's the only mission I've ever actually flown. So it's kind of an interesting thing that uh, when it comes to flight sim, you can see exactly what I do with it. Enjoy.